In this second knowledge clip on the law of the sea, we are going to briefly see the legal regime of the different maritime zones. In order to do so, we are going to see first how states can calculate the extension of the different maritime zones, and then we will focus on the areas within national jurisdiction to then conclude with the areas beyond national jurisdiction. So let's see first how states can determine the different maritime zones. In order to do so, they have to first determine the baselines. Uh, on the basis of Article 5 of the Law of the Sea Convention, states can use the normal uh, baseline system if they have a quite linear coast. And this uh, uh, normal system follows the low water line along the coast. Here you see a map uh, with an example of a quite linear coast and how the state can determine the uh, baseline. But this is not always possible. States often have a, a deeply indented uh, coast or they have a fringe of islands along the coast. Think for instance about Norway or Greece. So in those cases they can adopt a system of straight uh, baselines as you see in the map here attached. And in those cases, uh, the coastal state will determine some external points to the coast and will just draw some straight baselines joining those external uh, points. Once the state has determined the baseline, it can then project uh, the different uh, maritime zones following uh, the criteria set in the Law of the Sea Convention. And you have here in uh, the figure at here attached uh, the maximum extension of the different uh, maritime zones. So first of all, let's see the uh, maritime zones within national jurisdiction. The first ones are, of course, the internal waters and the territorial sea. In the uh, uh, territorial sea, uh, the state exercises uh, full sovereignty. Uh, this uh, sovereignty um, includes as well the airspace and uh, the bed and the subsoil, so not only the water column. Uh, this sovereignty can extend uh, for a maximum of 12 nautical miles from the baseline. But uh, there is as well an exception, um, a very important exception to the sovereignty of the state, which is the right of innocent passage, which is regulated uh, in Articles 17 to 26. On the basis of this uh, right, foreign vessels uh, can uh, navigate uh, through uh, the territorial sea, uh, for instance, in order to reach a port or to leave a port. Uh, they can enjoy this right as long as they comply with the measures uh, adopted by the coastal state on the basis of the Law of the Sea Convention. Another uh, very important um, area, zone, uh, within national jurisdiction is the continental shelf. The continental shelf is the uh, natural prolongation of the landmass for a maximum extension of 200 nautical miles. There is the possibility under very stringent uh, conditions to actually extend uh, the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles for a maximum of 350 nautical miles and these conditions are set in Article 76 of uh, the Law of the Sea Convention. In the uh, continental shelf, the state exercises sovereign rights and it can exist that means that it exercises uh, exclusive jurisdiction on the continental shelf and that uh, foreign uh, companies for instance might be allowed to uh, exercise some economic activities there but only with the um, authorization of uh, the coastal state the coastal state has automatically a continental shelf. It doesn't need to declare it. It doesn't need to occupy it or to use it. It's part of its landmass and so it, up, it possesses it um, automatically by the fact of existing. This is a very important point because it differentiates the continental shelf from two other uh, zones within national jurisdiction, uh, the contiguous zone and the exclusive economic zone, which do not exist automatically. Uh, states have to declare them and delimit them, and in those zones the state can only perform some very specific functions as uh, determined in the Law of the Sea Convention. And for 
for all those reasons, the zones are also defined as functional zones. In the contiguous zone, for instance, the state can exercise um, measures for the prevention or the punishment of violations to its laws in four different fields, uh, customs, uh, fiscality, immigration and health. Uh, these uh, measures can be uh, implemented in an area of uh, 24 miles uh, from the baseline, so 12 nautical miles beyond the territorial water. Uh, this is uh, the exclusive economic zone has a completely different purpose. Uh, in the exclusive economic zone, the state can exercise some sovereign right for the exploration and exploitation of uh, um, natural resources, both living and not living. So it means both fisheries, but as well oil and gas or renewable energy. So the rights are linked to the performance of economic activities. As the uh, exclusive economic zone is a functional zone and is only existence, uh, I mean, it only exists for the performance of those specific activities, it means that uh, other states, for instance, can still perform a series of activities which are um, regulated under the um, IC's regime, and for this reason, the coastal state has to perform its own rights with due regard for the rights of the other states. Um, let's move now to the uh, areas beyond uh, national jurisdiction, so from to the high seas and uh, the deep sea uh, bed. So, on the high seas, uh, all states both uh, coastal and landlocked can exercise the so-called freedoms of the high seas, which are a, a direct result of the Marie-Liber approach of uh, uh, Grotius, as we have seen in the first knowledge clip. And you have in Article 87 of the Law of the Sea Convention a non-exhaustive list of those freedoms. While exercising those freedoms, states have to have due regard for the uh, rights, so for the freedoms of the other states. Um, on the high seas, the flag state has exclusive jurisdiction on its vessels. As the high seas cannot be submitted to the sovereignty of any state, then the uh, jurisdiction is there uh, applied on the basis of the nationality link between the vessel and the state of registration, so the flag state. There are as well, uh, however, some um, exceptions to the exclusivity of the jurisdiction of the flag state, and these exceptions uh, are regulated in Articles uh, 99 to 111, and they mainly concern actually uh, the possibility of exercising some enforcement powers in relation to um, illicit activities on the high seas. Let's see now the last uh, zone, uh, and which is the uh, deep seabed area. This is one of the big novelties introduced by the Law of the Sea Convention in 1982. The deep seabed area uh, is, uh, has been declared a common heritage of mankind. This means that no state can claim or exercise sovereignty or uh, sovereign rights over it and over its resources. And it means as well that it is internationally managed uh, through, the, uh, deep, uh, through the International Seabed Authority. Uh, the International Seabed Authority is an international organization and uh, it has limited uh, competences, as, however, in the sense that it can only uh, regulate the uh, exploration and exploitation on non-biological resources.